And now we have Hitmonlee, the kicking fiend. Hitmonlee has fought its way to fan favorite status since the first generation, as most first generation Pokemon do, as it has supremely cool real life inspiration for its design. Both Bruce Lee, as its name suggests, and famous Japanese kickboxer Tadashi Sawamura. Today we'll examine if Hitmonlee's ferocious footwork found footing in the competitive scene. So we ask, how good was Hitmonlee actually? And in this video, we'll be going over these competitive formats. All right, everyone, are you ready? Say it with me now. Unfortunately, Hitmonlee has absolutely zero place in its debut generation of OU. Now, Hitmonlee might seem promising given its terrific attack stat and solid speed alongside a stab high jump kick, which was super effective against the three big normal types of the tier, Tauros, Snorlax, and Chansey, while also being super effective against other metagame staples, Rhydon, Golem, Cloyster, and Lapras. Even high jump kick only did 1 HP of crash damage if it missed. These are of course good traits. However, Hitmonlee had incredibly debilitating issues that held it back from making use of these good traits. The first issue was that it was ridiculously frail. Its defensive stats were amongst the most pitiful in the entire game. This in conjunction with its lack of useful resistances, deathly fear of paralysis, and inability to one hit KO anything, even Chansey, made Hitmonlee incredibly difficult to get on the field safely without being able irrevocably crippled. The second issue was that Hitmonlee was completely and utterly walled by the other dominant type in the RBYOU metagame. Psychic, of course. Several of them even packed recovery moves. Starmie in particular was a total death sentence thanks to its solid defense stat that meant it shrugged off Body Slam and Hyper Beam. However, even the non-healing Executor didn't even need to heal to not only stand in Hitmonlee's way, but to turn it into an opportunity to severely threaten Hitmonlee's team almost for free. Hitmonlee wasn't even limited to getting walled by psychics either. Zapdos dominated it as well, and if Gengar showed up, then forget about it. Hitmonlee just couldn't accomplish anything at all reliably in the first generation of OU. It was even outclassed by Machamp, who already was not a good Pokemon, but at least wasn't paper thin and had decent coverage options in addition to a higher attack stat. Hitmonlee couldn't even cut it in UU, as Hypno and Tentacruel were the best Pokemon in the tier and absolutely dominated it, as did other staples such as Dragonite, Kadabra, Dodrio, and Haunter, to name just a few. Sad as it is, Hitmonlee's kicks failed to leave any sort of impact on the first generation. Gen 2 came around and the special stat splitting into special attack and special defense worked in Hitmonlee's favor as it now boasted an excellent 110 special defense stat, meaning it was no longer paper thin, on that side of the spectrum at least. It wasn't a paragon of special bulk since its HP stat remained rather miserable, but it was something. Other changes included being able to use hidden power for coverage, though it would still have to choose between being walled by psychic or flying types, high jump kick now dealing recoil to the tune of 1 eighth of the damage it would have dealt to the opponent if it missed, gaining return as a sort of cross in between Body Slam and the now defunct Hyper Beam in terms of normal coverage, the move Reversal which had some gimmick potential, and Rapid Spin which could deal with spikes if nothing else. However, Hitmonlee couldn't do anything to Ghost types unless it ran Hidden Power Ghost. These additions were fairly bland in the grand scheme of things. OU was once again far beyond Hitmonlee's reach as Machamp and Heracross were far superior. Hitmonlee once more wasn't up to snuff in Yu either. The meta was chock full of Pokemon that absolutely dominated it, like Nidoqueen, Scyther, Quillfish, Haunter, the Slow Twins, and Hypno, all of whom were absolutely top tier and also just the tip of the iceberg. Hitmonlee wound up in NU, and there it was finally at least usable. Now it still struggled greatly against many top tier Pokemon, namely Zatu and Weezing, among others like Firo, Pidgeot, and Gastly. Side note, yes, Gastly was slash is viable in GSC NU. Anyway, Hitmonlee at least threatened many other common good Pokemon such as Dugong, Pseudowoodle, and Stantler with its high jump kick. And unlike Primeape, its main competition, who was effectively stronger despite its lower attack stat thanks to Cross Chop's higher base power, Hitmonlee's great special defense let it take a few attacks such as Dugong, Octillery, and Flareon stat. But it wasn't much and Primeape was usually far preferred, but it was something for Hitmonlee. 
Gen 3 came around and OU was once more a pipe dream's pipe dream for Hitmonlee. However, in Yu Yu, Hitmonlee finally became not just usable and not even just a legitimate choice that was able to threaten many teams, but one of the fiercest offensive options in the tier. The addition of Choice Band gave it a much needed power boost and it gained crucial coverage in Rock Slide and Earthquake, making it much more difficult to wall. This also meant it no longer had to pick and choose its hidden powers. It could just run Ghost. Hitmonlee also gained some excellent new fighting moves. Focus Punch was prediction heavy but had obscene power. Brick Break was a more reliable main stab that was worth its slightly lower base power since it didn't cover recoil and shattered screens to boot. And Mock Punch was an excellent priority move, especially useful for finishing off select berry reversal users at 1 HP, such as Scyther or even opposing Hitmonlee, as well as weakened Rain Dance Sweepers, especially the premier one, the fighting weak Amistar. Of course, High Jump Kick, despite having increased recoil to the tune of 50% of the damage it would have caused was still a fine choice. Finally, Hitmonlee even gained a terrific ability in Limber that made it immune to paralysis, as removing Thunder Wave as an option to deal with its offensive onslaught meant defensive teams had one less way to save it off. While Hitmonlee was still physically frail, its power level now justified the tricky dance that was getting it onto the field safely, as it threatened a ton of the metagame. Most notably, its stab was able to one-hit KO Tear Queen, Kangaskhan, as well as other top threats like Wall Rain and Agron. Its sheer power made it generally difficult to switch into for frailer resists. Its coverage moves also had explosive potential, especially since Choice Band's power boosts gave them one-hit KO potential. For example, Mischievous got eviscerated by Hidden Power Ghost, Muck got trashed by Earthquake, and Pinsir was destroyed by Rock Slide. Even bulkier walls like Hypno and Altaria struggled to not collapse under the pressure Hitmonlee's powerful moves exerted on them. The only truly safe Pokemon against Hitmonlee irrespective of its coverage, was a defensively invested Gligar, which was notably rarer than its offensive counterpart. And even a max HP, max defense, impish Gligar got 3-hit KO'd by Focus Punch, while not having any recovery outside leftovers. The more common offensive Gligar sets were under heavy pressure from HP Ghosts and Rock Slide as is, but Focus Punch was the real kicker. Sort of pun, sort of intended, as it walloped Gligar for over 70%. This was just the Choice Band variant too, its immediate tough to deal with power made it Hitmonlee's defining set, but as mentioned earlier, Hitmonlee could also run a very dangerous reversal set. It could get itself to 1 HP with Endure or Substitute, which would activate its Select Berry and give it a speed boost, letting it outrun everything while jacking reversal's power up to 200, 300 after stab, and priming it to sweep. It was immediately tough to stop without a priority move. As a matter of fact, most UU teams packed priority moves, even on Pokemon not known for them such as Ninetales and its quick attack, just because of how dangerous Salak reversal Pokemon were. And alongside Scyther, Hitmonlee was one of the two most threatening examples of the strategy that had to be kept in mind, lest they ran over entire teams. Overall, Hitmonlee was one of Advanced UU's best, most dangerous offensive threats, as it required a mix of caution and risk-taking, but it would reward its trainer's bold choices by destroying just about everything. Gen 4 came around, and while OU would continue to be far beyond its reach, Hitmonlee was once more a solid wall breaker in UU. It received several notable buffs in the new generation. The addition of Life Orb meant it could boost its attacks without the restriction of Choice Band. It also received an incredible new fighting stab move in close combat. In addition, it gained a terrific new priority move in Sucker Punch, which outdid even Stab Bok Punch, and had the coverage to hit types that gave Hitmonlee trouble. As Sucker Punch hit Flyers neutrally, and Ghost and Psychic super effectively. It was also finally worth sometimes finding a move slot for Rapid Spin, given that hazards were omnipresent now, seeing as Stealth Rock was on every team. It even got the nice boost of its rock coverage being powered up, as it could now exchange Rock Slide for Stone Edge. Finally, speaking of coverage, Hitmonlee received just a bit more in the form of Blaze Kick, which allowed it to destroy Tier King Venusaur. Hitmonlee wasn't able to effortlessly rip through teams like it was in the previous generation due to some of the new Pokemon that came around, namely Spirit Tomb and Yuxi, as well as Weezing dropping into Yuyu. However, if its teammates could take advantage of those two, for example, Houndoom switched into and destroyed all of them, gaining flash fire boost from Spirit Tomb and Weezing's will o -Wisp, and being able to pursue trap Yuxi, then Hitmonlee was incredibly fearsome because once again, it severely threatened some of the best Pokemon around. The tier's emblematic fire water grass cores were not able to switch into it, while Registeel had to run terrified as well. Hitmonlee's limber ability was especially useful for dodging Thunder Wave 
Wave, while switching into Steel types Chansey and Clefable. The latter two being more examples of standard Pokemon that Hitmonlee just thrashed. Aside from the aforementioned Uxie and Spiritomb, most common fighting resists had to mortally fear Hitmonlee's coverage. In addition to Venusaur dropping to Blaze Kick, Stone Edge would take down Flyers, Miss Magius, and Rotom, while Toxicroak was crushed by Earthquake. Mesperit did well switching in, but got smacked by Sucker Punch for actually trying to attack Hitmonlee. It spoke to how effective Hitmonlee was that it was a legitimate choice in a metagame that was not short on excellent fighting types. All of Blaziken, Toxicroak, Hitmontop, and Primate were terrific Pokemon, yet Hitmonlee was not even close to being outclassed. It blended the other's traits into an offensive phenom. Its Life Orb set was its most defining, but it could effectively branch out. Choice Scarf was a fine cleaner, Choice Ban upped the prediction factor in exchange for incredible power, and it could even bluff Choice with Black Belt and take advantage by using Substitute. Overall, Hitmonlee was a great Pokemon in Gen 4 Yu Yu. Gen 5 came and brought several boosts for Hitmonlee. First of all, while High Jump Kick still took 50% of Hitmonlee's HP if it missed, it was also buffed to a whopping 130 base power. And it was also boosted by Hitmonlee's Reckless ability, making for an astonishingly powerful attack. Hitmonlee also gained another new ability, Unburden, which doubled its speed once it had consumed a one-time use item, such as a berry or a gem. This was huge as even Choice Scarfers would be unable to outrun it. Oh, Yu was of course far beyond its reach, and this time around Yu Yu was too much for it as well. There was a ton of fighting type competition, such as Heracross and Mian Shao, that did better against the common Pokemon in the metagame. However, Hitmonlee established itself as one of the scariest Pokemon in the new tier below Yu Yu, that being Aryu, and there it established itself as a threat. It almost mandated pursuit support, given how much it struggled with the tier's ghost, as even its coverage moves didn't get it too far. But it was so powerful that it was worth it. Hitmonlee's record boosted high jump kick was absolutely ridiculous, coming in at an astonishing 234 base power with stab also factored in. And with life orb on top of that, it was just even more mind blowing. Two hit KOing even the incredibly bulky Tangro. Reckless also powered up its double edge, letting it crush Yuxi, which its similarly powerful competitor Metacham could not. Nor did Metacham pack Mach Punch and Sucker Punch or Hitmonlee's base 87 speed stat that let it get the jump on common offensive Pokemon like Cobb Tops, Magmortar, and Rotom Mo. Hitmonlee's Unburdened set was also fierce, although in a different way. It was the opposite of its Reckless set, which would never sweep, but would destroy the opposition's defenses. The Unburdened set wasn't going to cut through walls, but against weakened offensive teams, it would run them over with ease. It could still help itself out on offense by using a Fighting Gem, giving its close combat a meaty one-time choice band boost so that it could weaken the opposition, whilst gaining that all-important speed boost. But it could also play it safe with fake out and normal gem, guaranteeing the boost for itself even against faster opposing Pokemon. From there, no choice Scarfer would outspeed it, not even the incredibly fast and rare Chinchino, and the opposing team had to hope they had a Pokemon that could take a hit from it, which isn't easy for offensive teams, which tended to be on the frailer side apart from Drodagon, who almost always was forced to absorb a hit early on. So, as long as Hitmonlee wasn't sent in to try and beat the entire team from full health, it had a very real shot at cleaning up most offense. It was particularly vulnerable to priority attacks thanks to its pitiful physical defense, which was made worse by close combat's defense drops, making it easy prey for Entei's extreme speed and Cobbletops' Aqua Jet, but these Pokemon did not switch in safely, and Hitmonlee wasn't obligated to stay in, as it was still a threat against offensive teams even without the Unburden boost. It was more a matter of how its trainers wanted to utilize it, whether they wanted to punch a hole in the opposition or go right for the sweep. Their choice of gem also played heavily into this. Overall, Hitmonlee diversified a lot more concretely in Generation 5, and while it had its flaws, it was also among the RU tier's best in whichever role it decided to take up, whether that be a wall breaker or late game sweeper. Hitmonlee didn't care for fairy types introduced in Generation 6, but it did enjoy the massively buffed Knockoff, an incredible move that it could use to smack the ghosts and psychics that had plagued it for so long. The immense power creep meant that Yu Yu was almost as certainly out of Hitmonlee's reach as OU, but it settled into RU nicely once again, becoming one of the metagame's defining offensive Pokemon for its blend of posing a threat and even providing some utility. Gems being nerfed meant Hitmonlee no longer made use of 
Unburden, focusing only on Reckless. It made use of Rapid Spin, which was a luxury and notable advantage in the Age of the Fog, and preyed on the lack of ghosts in Aryu, outside of the occasional Spirit Tomb, which was admittingly very bad news, but Hitmonlee could at least knock off its leftovers and let a teammate's The Fog handle the anti-hazard duties. Hitmonlee used Life Orb once again to power through much of the metagame. One hit KOing something as bulky as Escavalier and Drudagon was simply incredible, and Feraler resists like Fletchinder and Delphox also got absolutely walloped. Now, it was walled by a few Pokemon in addition to the aforementioned Spirit Tomb, namely Golbat and Togetic, but that was a window for Rapid Spin, and the two were also crippled by Hitmonlee's knockoff, removing their Eviolite. Those Pokemon were reserved for more defensive teams anyway, and Hitmonlee's solid speed stat let it get the jump on plenty of common offensive Pokemon, making it useful against faster paced teams despite its lack of bulk, especially since it would almost automatically turn to speed advantage against Pokemon like Braviary into a KO. That said, Hitmonlee could turn the tables on Aromatisse and Togetic by slotting in Poison Jab on occasion. Hitmonlee could also fully embrace the offensive killer role in a Choice Scarf set. Now let's be real, it didn't need Life Orb to maul offensive Pokemon like Jolteon. What it needed was to be able to hit them before it was hit itself, and Scarf allowed for that. Plus, most defensive teams were going to wall it anyway, so not much was lost besides flexibility on its rapid spin. And even then, the option to get an emergency spin off against faster Pokemon was highly valuable. Overall, Hitmonlee was an important piece of offense in Gen 6 RU, able to both bring the pain on the opponent and bring crucial support for its team. Now on to Gen 7. Power Creep, well, hit Hitmonlee hard in Gen 7, as even Aryu was too much for it. So for the first time since GSC, it found itself in NU, and just like in GSC, it struggled even there. It had tough competition, namely the tier-defining Passimian. Now Hitmonlee did have a niche, as it gained Curse, which alongside White Herb to remove the speed drop and activate on Burden, could unleash a whole new level of sweet potential, at least in theory. However, in practice, it was was seriously flawed. It had one shot at the sweep, and White Herb could also be triggered by something like Incineroar's Intimidate, thus ruining the sweep. It wasn't rare for Hitmonlee to run into Pokemon it couldn't hurt either, as Weezing, Garbodor, Pilosan, Vikavolt, and Whimsicott, among others like its old nemesis Golbat, were everywhere. It couldn't even break Slowking at all reliably. There wasn't much to Hitmonlee, as it was gimmicky and not worth using in serious battles. Though it technically had a niche, it was just wholly outclassed, and it's almost miraculous that it didn't drop to PU given how poor it was. And at the time of this video, Sword and Shield RU is still in development, but Hitmonlee looks to be forming a niche in the tier once again. It appreciates the lack of Megas and Zemus power creeping it up, and Rapid Spin is always useful utility, especially with the lower amount of options, thanks to Dexit. So it looks like Hitmonlee will be able to establish itself as a solid RU choice once more. And that's it! So how good was Hitmonlee actually? Well, unfortunately, it's never had any sort of OU success. It's had a tumultuous up and down roller coaster ride throughout the lower tiers. One could even say it's kicked around them. Sorry, not sorry. Anyway, the first two generations saw it as nearly unusable. Then it jumped to Yuyu with a solid niche for a couple of generations. Then it dropped to Aryu for a couple more. Then it bottomed out in NU in Gen 7, like in the first two gens. It's building itself back up in Aryu in the current Gen 8, and hopefully it'll be kicking its way to success there once again. Also, we didn't find any notable placements for it in VGC. Oh gee, I wonder why. Thanks for watching everyone, and as always, if you like the video and you want to see more, be sure to subscribe to False Wipe Gaming for more weekly Pokemon content, and in the comments, I want to know what do you think about competitive Hitmonlee? How would you make it better for single success? What would you give it over Hitmontop for VGC? Whatever it is, let me know in the comments down below. Also, thank you so much to our patrons for continued support of our videos, and thank you to everyone else watching as well. And follow my crew on these social media platforms. And that's all I got. See you next time, everyone.